Now involving it. Thank you. <laughs> I don't, they're in love with that, as if we don't get it. But anyway, there's another story involving an airplane that caught our attention this week. We're going to meet a 10 year old, uh, meet rather 10 year old Dakota. There. Dakota. It is a 38 pound Basenji who was mistakenly placed in the unheated cargo hold of a United Airlines flight recently. When the folks at United realized their mistake, they immediately diverted to Denver and landed. Dakota flew the rest of the way in coach and is obviously doing fine. We're going to have some tips on what you need to do if you're traveling with a pet this summer. Cargo hold. There, <laughs> that's what that says. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Appreciate your help. Anytime. First, let's go outside for a check of the weather from Al. Patting in your neck of the woods. Morning, I'm Brian Hackney. We're starting out with uh, partly sunny skies for the Bay Area. Weak cold front out in the Pacific will increase clouds later in the day. We won't get much from this when it does uh, introduce a few showers into the forecast, mostly tonight. It'll squeeze out most of its moisture as it moves in over the coast plain so that by the time it gets inland, there won't be much left. So don't expect much from this, and it'll mostly be tonight. Forecast highs in San Francisco, 61 today, 73 in San Jose, and the extended forecast we're going to expect things to clear up tomorrow. Hey, and you talk about your planning. Hi. This lady named her dog after you, Katie. That's right. Oh. Oh. Nice and friendly. Nice and friendly. That's right. There you go. Thank you, Al. I'm so flattered. Thanks very much. Planes make unscheduled stops for a variety of reasons, but Monday, United Airlines flight from Washington, D.C. to San Jose was diverted to Denver because of a dog. Mike Bell and his dog, Dakota, are safe at home in San Jose, California this morning with the tail. Hi, Mike. How are you? How are you doing, Katie? Fine, thank you. All right, well, tell us how this all started. I understand that you were kind of concerned uh, when you watched uh, Dakota being loaded into the plane. Is that right? Uh, yes, I was concerned. Um, I just wanted to verify that he was on the plane. I was like the last person to board, and uh, the crew had told me that he was on board before I got on the plane. And, and was Dakota placed in the right uh, location as far as you were concerned, where, in terms of your understanding, where uh, the dog would spend the flight? I just said they put him in the cargo hold, and I thought they knew what, what they were doing. And then you learned that there was a problem. What happened? Uh, about two and a half hours into the flight, the flight attendant had tapped me on the shoulder and said the captain needed to talk to me about my dog. So he escorted me up to the front of the plane where the captain came out of the cockpit and uh, gave me the, the bad news. And what did the pilot say to you? Lost. He, he said that the dog had died? Oh, you can't hear us. Hello, can you hear me, Mike? Okay, Mike, if you can stand okay. by for a moment. Mike Bell, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, Katie. I'm sorry. You said that the pilot gave you the bad news. What did he communicate to you? He had told me that um, he had gotten a dispatch saying that the dog was mistakenly loaded into the wrong section of the plane. Um, he wasn't sure if the dog was alive at that moment. If we had continued to San Jose, the dog would have died. So he decided to make an emergency landing uh, or divert the plane to Denver. And that time we can check on the, on the status of the dog. And, and, and explain, Mike, for me where the dog was placed, where you thought uh, it should have been placed, and where the dog actually spent the flight. Well, supposedly, from what I heard, he was supposed to be placed in the back of the plane where they have a section for animals where it's heated and it um, has the proper conditions for him. Apparently, he was loaded in the front of the plane, which is not made for, for animals. And it was very, very cold where, the, where your dog was loaded. Yeah, it was... Um, we're at like 31,000 feet and the outside temperature was extremely cold. Um, so there was no heated or any safety measures in the back, well, in the front of the plane form how where, did, where the cargo hole was. How did the passengers react, Mike, when they learned that you would have to make an emergency stop in Denver because of your dog? Well, I was in complete shock. I, they just said I turned white as a ghost. I just couldn't believe something like that could happen to me. Um, you hear horror stories about dogs flying on airplanes and I didn't think it would happen to me, but when he told me that bad news, I was just in, in complete shock. I couldn't believe it. And when you got to Denver and you saw your dog, um, what kind of condition was she in? Um, he was, he, he went, was in really sorry. good. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry about he was that. In, uh, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, he was in good condition. Um, he was shaken, but I don't know if that's from the, the cold or just from being the stress and all the people, all the attention he was getting as, as well. Um, when I exited the plane, the pilot walked me down to the plane. We went to the tarmat and he was in his crate. And I was just glad to see him that he was alive. And I know that, the, that they allowed you to spend, for Dakota rather, to spend the rest of the flight next to you wrapped in blankets, even though that's 
against the rules. Yes, I really appreciate the pilot. He let me do that. I was like concerned everybody put him back on the plane. And I asked the pilot if we could um, bring him on the plane. The plane was half full. I had two seats empty next to me. Um, he had asked the supervisor in Denver. Initially, he said no, but the pilot talked him into it. And as soon as I picked, I picked up the dog and carried him on the plane, and as soon as I entered the plane, the passengers um, started cheering and clapping for the, for the dog that he was alive. So that made me really happy. Oh, that's nice. Lots of dog lovers on board. Would you ever fly again with Dakota? Uh, that's a good question. At, at the moment, not right now, but maybe my, I might change my mind a year or so from now. All right. Well, Mike Bell, we're glad that uh, your dog is doing just fine. And please thank the translator in the room for us, will you? <laughs> I will. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Thanks, Mike. Good talking to you. Thank <laughs> nice you. talking to you. Now, Dakota's was an unusual situation, but for more on what you need to know about traveling with your pets, we want to turn to today travel editor Peter Greenberg. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Get All right. It. Well, you know what? This is a real horror story, and apparently we said it's an unusual case, but a lot of pets are lost in airplanes every year, aren't they? They are. You know, if you listen to the airlines, they'll tell you that 99% of the pets that they transport arrive at their destination, you know, without incident, and they're healthy. Well, what about the other 1%? If you look at the numbers, that's 500,000 pets transported every year. That's 5,000 pets that don't arrive safely. You got a lot of unhappy pet owners who are quite emotional because they treat their pets as members of their family. Well, Peter, what happens? What goes wrong? Well, the pets succumb to either extremes of heat or cold, or in some cases, hypoxia. They just they suffocate. So in, in, in many cases, a lot of times, the pets will actually die on the tarmac on connecting flights. During the summer or the winter months, if you've got a one or two or three hour connection, these pets can just be sitting out there on the tarmac and they die. So a lot of airlines right now have instituted moratorium that will say, okay, between either June 1 or June 15th and September 15th in the summer months, or again in the, in the winter months, they're just not going to accept uh, pets as checked baggage. Because the temperatures are just too extreme for them to survive. Exactly. What about What about carrying the animals with you on board? I know there are restrictions regarding that. There are. Many airlines will allow one, two, or even three animals per cabin as long as they fit in an approved container and will fit in, in the seat in front of you. And there are other rules as well. You cannot take the animal out in flight and walk it around the cabin. The, the story that Mike just told about being allowed to fly with his, with his dog really is the exception. Okay, and real quickly, Peter, if, if a dog owner or animal owner loses a pet, what kind of recourse do you have? Well, that's the, the sad story, Katie, because uh, airlines have traditionally treated lost pa pets or, or damaged pets, if you will, as lost or damaged luggage with the same kind of liability restrictions that they have in the past, either $1,250 in the past or now up to about $2,500. That is little recourse, really, for most passengers who really, once again, treat their animals as children. All right. Peter Greenberg. Peter, thanks so much. Okay. Up next, could Mrs. Hal have made it on?